how big of a problem are these higher rates? I mean, and, and I love how we keep talking about higher rates. They're still so low, but obviously the direction is uh, proving problematic. But how, how problematic is it going to be? Well, I mean, one of the biggest reasons why it's such a problem is that the market is expensive. I mean, we have valuations that are very, very much stretched. I mean, we're really basically at the second high, highest level uh, in memory. I mean, of course, the, the, the most expensive being back at the, uh, you know, during the tech bubble, at the end of the tech bubble. Um, and so when valuations are stretched, uh, people uh, justify those stretched valuations because of very low interest rates. And if uh, interest rates start to move up, uh, it, it, it becomes a, more of a problem and those stretched valuations become more of a concern. Concern. And I'd also note that uh, one of the things when you see interest rates, even it doesn't really matter where they start. If when they when they rise a significant amount, uh, and they've risen over 200 percent on the on the 10-year uh, yield, uh, that, that's that's a situation where yes, they can both go up in tandem for a while. In other words, the stock market and yields can go up for a while, but eventually, uh, it always. And you go back the last 40 years, it always uh, causes a disruption in the marketplace. Sometimes it's only a correction, and of course, corrections are 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 normal and healthy, and with the economy really picking up, uh, I think that's that's the more likely scenario rather than a big bear market or anything. Uh, but it does cause some problems in a market that, that's very stretched in, in terms of uh, value. Matt, what could what could spook the market here? What could Jerome Powell say to spook the market? It seems that we know we really know the setup here. A lot of focus on those projections, but is there something that you're watching that could really uh, shake investors out here? Well, I mean, the, one of the things that that, that uh, we're seeing right now is I think what, what's happening with with the uh, the Fed is they they've changed their policy. I mean, they're doing it very subtly. They're not doing the big. They're not suddenly you know big QE. They're not going to have a taper tantrum. They want to avoid that. They want it to be very gradual. Um, they're obviously not raising interest rates, and they keep talking about how they're not even thinking about thinking about raising, raising interest rates. But the thing is, they are are telling us that they're willing to let uh, long term interest rates rise. Because by saying that, that the interest rates, they're, they're willing to let inflation run hot, that's the same thing as, as saying you're willing to let uh, long-term interest rates rise. And, uh, and, so, and, and of course, they, you know, in the old days, they didn't really control uh, long-term interest rates. But because of QE, they can and do. Uh, so the, the fact that they're really, that's, a, that's a, a very subtle change. In other words, I think that as, as people, he'll, he'll try to say it in such a way that is very gradual. Um, so I don't think we'll get a big thing today that really shakes things out. Uh, but there's, there's no question in my mind that they've made a subtle change to their policy. And that's the thing that's really scaring people. And we see there uh, Olo ringing the bell on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Their CEO, uh, Noah Glass, will be on Yahoo Finance uh, right around 1230. Um, Matt, let's talk about some of the more uh, fun stuff going on in the market. That, of course, is what's happening with some of these reopening trades, what's happening um, in crypto. And, and I guess to me, that talks about the retail bid and, and where we've seen a lot of uh, retail traders playing in the market. Um, how, how are you thinking about those trends, which you know obviously have been such a big part of the story in the last year? Well, you know, there's just two ways to look at it. Of course, uh, on the on the bright side, I think the, the retail investor uh, is going to is, is very po positive for the marketplace. And the one thing that they have that they have not had in the past. I mean, you think about when the retail investor really got involved in the late 1990s, it ended up in a tragedy. In, late, in the 1920s, the same thing happened. Now, however, because there's so many other things that, that, that investors can get involved with in in terms of hedging themselves, whether it be in the options market or the ETF market, uh, and, and Areas like that, uh, hopefully they, they, will, they will be able to uh, take advantage of moves in both directions. So I think that uh, that's a positive thing. But uh, again, the, the, the point of the matter is that they've made so much money, especially in the options market. It shows uh, a certain amount of froth, and uh, at some point uh, that comes to you know, bite them a little bit. And uh, so it's, it's another reason to be concerned. I mean, the, the, again, I don't want to be overstretched. I mean, the stock market's at all-time highs, but the divergence with, 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 with what's going on in the over-the-counter counter market with these tech stocks, uh, at some point, if the tech stocks don't play catch up, uh, that's going to cause some problems. And, uh, and, and therefore, uh, this whole thing with the economy trying to play catch up with the market, I think it'll end up having, the, well, the, well they'll, they'll meet somewhere in the middle with the market having to come down a little bit. So reading between the lines, Matt, it sounds like you're not nibbling on those tech st stocks yourself just yet or wouldn't recommend doing so. Where are you seeing opportunities right now? I mean, you know, to your point, things that that are seen as benefiting from the reopening trade have had quite a run. 
Yeah, exactly. And and I just think the whole market, it feels like it, well, it should really come back. The market doesn't always do what it should do. Uh, but again, uh, so one of the things I'm looking at is is the the uh, trades that I really turned bullish on a while ago. They're, they've become very popular now. But back in September, I was really pushing the energy stocks and the, uh, and the bank names. On a t purely technical basis, they're getting a little overbought. So I wouldn't be aggressive up here. You can still nibble on those names. But if we do get any kind of a pullback, uh, we saw a little bit of pullback on those names yesterday. Yesterday, but if they come further back, that's when you want to get uh, a bit more aggressive because I do think we're in the early stages of a long-term bull market in commodities. And as interest rates uh, rise and the yield curve uh, continues to steepen, that's going to be good for the bank stocks as well. So that rotation that's been going on, you could be a little less aggressive with it right now, but I think you get more aggressive uh, if the overall market uh, does see a pullback. Matt, I was just giggling. I'm looking at a tweet that I put out this morning on comparing Tesla to, to Volkswagen. And it's interesting because Volkswagen shares are up 57% year to date. Tesla's up marginally. And I know you track Tesla and you have for, for quite a while. What are the charts telling you? Do you think this underperformance is deserved here? Well, I mean, there's... Yes. I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, again, because of my concerns about the overall economy in the market, I mean, every, you know, the economy is going to explode compared to 2020. But compared to 2019 and 2018, it's only hope it's really only going to be about the same, maybe mildly better. Uh, same with earnings. Earnings are going to be about uh, projected to be about 7 percent better uh, than, uh, to, uh, than 2018 and 2019, even though they're going to be a lot better than last year. Yet the stock market's up 40 percent from that level. So the stock market is, because of all the stimulus, is already priced in all this stuff. And a big beneficiary of all that stimulus has been th has been Tesla. Uh, this is there's not there's a difference sometimes between a stock and a company. We can have great stocks uh, and 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 uh, I'm sorry, we can have companies that are great companies and the stocks that don't act so well for a while. This has been kind of dead money for for, for as you mentioned since the beginning of the year. And people are going to start focusing on other areas. And uh, because it's such a long term play. As the money comes out of that name, it will probably come back in a little bit. It has nothing to do with what I think about what the stock, you know, companies can change the world and still see deep pullbacks. We've already seen a decent pullback in Tesla. I think it could back, can pull back a little bit more. I mean, let's face it, Amazon's completely changed the world in the last 25 years, and they've see, seen multiple, multiple pullbacks of 20, 30, even 60 percent. Uh, not that Tesla's going to fall that much, but uh, uh, just keep it all in mind and, and keep it in relation to one, one another. There will be another great time to buy the stock. Yeah, that old market saw, trees don't grow to the sky, right, Matt? Um, by the way, exactly. your tie is noted. Very well done on this St. Patrick's Day. Very appropriate. Yeah. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yes? You too. And the Boston Celtics, I mean, you know, the, the, the Irish thing there. And LeBron James, we all know how, how great a basketball player he is. He's also a very smart guy. He chose, even though he's a Yankees fan, he chose to invest and buy a portion of the Red Sox. So, uh, you know, we, we just want to put that out there, too.